Hi again. So Caravaggio, according to Simon Shama, here's Caravaggio's Bacchus. And Bacchus is toasting to you for your fabulous work, <laughs> as I am. It has been a pleasure to read through your Caravaggio discussion posts. There are so many insights in every one about his art, about the magnetism of his tumultuous life. If you haven't read through all of them, please do because you are teaching each other very well here. You're teaching each other what to notice, what to think about, and you're also teaching each other what makes for skillful art historical writing. I can't yammer on about that endlessly. You really have to read each other's writing to start to notice, ah, yeah, I see why that really clarified the artwork for me. And I did want to elaborate on one particularly important point. It came up in a few posts, I'll scroll down to Ashru's because Ashru highlighted it really clearly. A quote that is presented from an early critic, the Spaniard Vincente Carduccio, who says Caravaggio was the ruin and demise of painting. Yes, he was known as the death of painting and painted with nothing but nature before him which he simply copied in this amazing way. And I love that Ashru says, wait, this is confusing. What is this Spaniard talking about? Saying Caravaggio has nothing but nature before him, which he simply copied in his amazing way. In terms of the way the word nature was used at the time, he's the Spaniard is essentially saying, he's just copying the way the world looks. He's not thinking about his artwork and creating a more artistic reality for us, which is what artworks were supposed to do. And there's a related idea, which is that the kind of harmonious perfection that seems to be created in these artworks is based on drawing, skillful, studious, amazing drawing. So part of what's shocking about this Bacchus is not just the dirt in his fingernails, his farmer's tan, but also that Caravaggio doesn't seem to have made numerous preparatory drawing to create an ideal vision of beauty. He's just sort of awkwardly flopping into what looks like, you know, a sheet that's pretending to be a toga. These are fruits that are allowed to rot during the painting process and then he just seems to paint the rot itself as if he's not sufficiently using his mind to create a better vision to elevate our minds so it's really under important to understand that drawing was central to the claims of artists in the renaissance and baroque to be intellectuals achieving a, a grand and meaningful vision rather than just manual laborers. Artists for most of the history of, of European culture before the Renaissance and Baroque had been understood to be just manual laborers, no different than someone who's cutting stones to create a building. When drawing becomes a way to measure out proportions, as Leonardo da Vinci is doing in order to create an idealized body and relate it to geometric forms, artists like Leonardo start to claim a status as intellectuals, thinkers, visionaries, not just manual laborers. Drawing was the medium for planning, for organizing, and for forming idealized visions, purposeful visions of what a an exalted human form would be. So look if you if you Google Bernini drawings, okay, you get all of these preparatory drawings in which Bernini is testing out different ideas, some of them in their first simple form, some highly detailed, because the process of creating complicated sculptures like St. Teresa and Ecstasy involves literally hundreds upon hundreds of drawings working out the problems, solving the problems. And the reason to solve the problem is to create an artwork that transcends ordinary reality. So if Caravaggio is not transcending ordinary reality, he's just giving us 
the muck, the mire, the base facts of reality. And he's not creating drawings that confirm his intellectual superiority to mere matter. So let me leave you with one last image. This is a painting by the great painter Jean Simeon Chardin, a French painter, from a little bit later, 1699 to 1779. We'll talk about him in the next module. But I'm showing you the painting because he's done a little joke here. He's created a painting about a painter painting, creating a painting. And this painter is a monkey. <laughs> so the joke is, he's making a joke about the idea of, does a painter just copy? Is a painter just a monkey copying monkey see, monkey do? And of course, there's a sculpture that looks like an ancient classical Greek and Roman sculpture as if he's studying. And there's a portfolio of drawings because as I said, an artist's claim to being more than just a simple laborer rested on the idea that they make preparatory drawings that create something more than just a copy. And this will become even more of an issue when in the 19th century, photography is invented and people will say, does this even count as art because it's nothing but a copy of reality?